Hello and welcome to the next lesson. In this lesson, we will look at the Pythagorean theorem. We will consider what one can use it for, and how it is derived. Let's first imagine, we have a right triangle and want to determine sides A, B and C. We know that we can put a grid over this triangle and then read the length of sides A and B. So here side A is 3 boxes long so 3 centimeters, and side B is 4 boxes long, so 4 centimeters. If we want to know side C now, that is not so easy, because it lies diagonally and is not lined up with the boxes like the other sides. Therefore, here we have to come up with something new to determine side C. We can now try to combine 3 and 4 centimeters together in some way, for example, by adding. Then you would have here this long distance 7 centimeters, but that is much too long compared to side C. You could also try cutting them in half now and then C. It is much shorter than side C, and you will soon find that by adding the two sides, or multiplying, or subtracting them from each other, you can not come to side C. That means we have to try to find a different method and the idea might come to us here as we look back over shapes and areas. And with the shapes we look at again, we can see the connection between their sides and their area. If we have a side, in the example here 1 cm, we can multiply this side by itself, so 1 times 1, and we get a box. So we square the side A. If we now take two boxes, this squared is 2 times 2. So we get 4 square centimeters, shown here as 4 boxes. At 3 inches we get 3 by 3, so 9 boxes. And that goes on forever. However, imagine we did not know side A. And someone gives us this 25 square centimeters as area. If we want to find the length of the side, then we would calculate the root. The square root of 25 is 5. So this side has length 5. Square root of 36 equals 6. So this square has a side length of 6. So the root always gives us the side of a square, that, when multiplied by itself, gives the area of the square. So 6 equals root of 36 because 6 times 6 is 36 square centimeters. So if we only have the area of the square, we can always figure out the side of this square. Okay, next we have to think about how we can determine the area of a right-angled triangle, and that is relatively easy. We just take our triangle here, duplicate it, and attach it to this triangle here. As you can see, we have now created a rectangular area, and the area of a rectangle is given by side A times side B, but we do not want the entire area here now. Instead we only want to have half. And that means we cut it in half, which we can represent mathematically as dividing by 2. So the triangular area will be A times B divided by 2. This is our triangle. And for our example with 3 cm and 4 cm we can now use the area formula here. A is 3 cm, B is 4 cm, so then we get 3 times 4 equals 12, then we divide by 2 and square centimeters, so our rectangle is 12 square centimeters. Then our triangle is half of that. So we get 12 divided by 2 equals 6 square centimeters. Please remember, if we have two of this triangle, then we always have a rectangle. So what we still need now is the first binomial formula. We looked at the basics of the first binomial formula and found that if we have a plus b times a plus b, we get a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. And geometrically, that means nothing more than the following area. Here we have the a squared. Then here we have a rectangle with a times b and here we have a rectangle with a times b. So we have it twice and then we still have the b squared. 
So in total a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. And here you see, we have side a here and side b here. This is one side of this shape, and here we also have side a and side b, which is the other side of this shape. That means we have a square here. One side is a plus b, the other side is a plus b. So all sides are the same length and it is a square. And how does that help us with our triangle? Look back at these triangles again. These triangles have sides of length a, b and c, and we have just seen. Here the sides are a plus b and a plus b. That means we can put these triangles on the outside. So here is a and here is b. Here is b and here is a. So now we have a plus b. Now here we also have a and b. So in order to create a plus b on this side, we also need a b, so that in total this side has length a plus b. That is, we have now created the same square, only the triangles are arranged differently. And we can already see here, through this arrangement we have created a c squared term. So in the middle now we have c times c. And still outside is a plus b times a plus b. And here we can see a very important fact. We cut the triangle out of the white area four times and got c squared. We also have the first binomial formula. If we cut out the green triangle four times from the entire white area then we get a squared plus b squared here. That is, we know when we cut out four of these triangles from this white area, the total white area is always the same. So if we arrange the triangles in this way, we have a squared plus b squared as the remainder. And if we arrange the triangles in this other way, we have c squared as the remainder. With this knowledge we can come to the Pythagorean theorem. So we write the formula here for this area a plus b times a plus b. And if we solve this now, we can say the following. This is the same as the c squared here. And now plus 1, 2, 3, 4 times the triangle's area. And a triangle's area is a times b divided by 2 and as we see, we have it 4 times. So we write here equals c squared plus 4 times a times b divided by 2, and 4 times a times b divided by 2 is 2 times a times b, which is twice the rectangle's area, this rectangle here, and this rectangle here, for the first case, with the first binomial formula. We get the area from the outer sides, a plus b times a plus b, as we can clearly see here, from a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. And now we can look at our two formulas that are from a plus b times a plus b and compare them with each other. That is, we see now, the areas are equal to a plus b times a plus b equals a plus b times a plus b. And so a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared equals c squared plus 2 times a times b. And now we can subtract the two a times b, which is the two rectangles, or the four triangles. Then all that remains is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So on the left we have have the rest of the white area as a squared plus b squared, and on the right we have the rest of the white area as c squared. The areas are the same size. They have a different shape, but the same area. Therefore, this results in a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that is exactly the famous Pythagorean theorem. Next let us use this new knowledge. If the square of a, that is a squared, and the square of b, that is b squared, are added together, then we must get the value c squared, as we have just seen. In the example, side a was 3 cm, and side b was 4 cm. Now we enter the exact values. So, a becomes 3 cm and b becomes 4 cm. Then we can calculate 3 cm squared plus 4 cm squared equals c squared. 9 square centimeters plus 16 square centimeters equals c squared. 25 square centimeters equals c squared. That is, the length of c squared is 25 square centimeters. Now, as we have seen, we can take the root of both sides to get rid of the square. Therefore, root of 25 square centimeters equals c. So, 5 centimeters equals c. We get 5 centimeters 
meters as the side length for c, which is our solution. Of course, there is also the longer way of calculating c. We could have set up our two squares with side lengths of a plus b, that is 4 plus 3, and then we would have gotten 7 times 7, so 49 square centimeters. Then we would subtract out the two rectangles that are each 4 by 3 which is 24 square centimeters in total leaving us with 49 square centimeters minus 24 square centimeters equals 25 square centimeters which is a squared and b squared and on the right side we would have subtracted the four triangles from 49 square centimeters that would also have been minus 24 square centimeters and we would have gotten 25 square centimeters for c squared and then the root of 25 square centimeters equals 5 centimeters equals c so in summary we can say two sides fully determined any right-angled triangle, 